What's up, fellow League Start enjoyers? You enjoy having a strong League Start with a bunch of currency at your disposal to buy those high-ticket items you know are going to skyrocket in price by week two and week three? I think it's pretty safe to say that we all do, but looking at the Atlas screen can be extremely daunting even for a seasoned player. I have a solution, though. I'm going to share with you four tried-and-true early game League mechanics that I've used pretty much every League Start since their respective mechanics were introduced to the Atlas tree. These strats are centered around specific league mechanics that consistently perform really, really well in week one and two, and they'll definitely alleviate some of that early game Atlas stress. I am, however, intentionally going to leave out some of the mechanics that have a much stronger showing in week three or four, like Harvest and Bestiary. I'm also going to leave out Delirium and Pinnacle boss related strategies because they're generally not easy league mechanics for a new player to deal with unless you're running a strong build tailored for that content. So the Atlas trees I've included are really, really bare bones and leave a lot of points in case you'd like to add any of those mechanics alongside the ones I recommend or combine any of the ones that I'm going to give to you today. And as always, all the details are in the description, including the links to the basic trees where you can see what points I recommend allocating in regards to their specific league mechanics. Just be mindful that the total points you get for your Atlas once you've completed everything is 132 Atlas points. Also keep in mind that these nodes here that I've highlighted are nodes that you can use to block specific mechanics from showing up when, you, when you're when you running your maps at, at all. And they will also provide a boost to the mechanics that you do want to see if you do so choose to block them. So let's say we're running an expedition-based strat. We do not want to block expedition, but we will block some other content to boost our chances of seeing expedition. I won't go too heavily into pack size strats like Grand Design or Growing Hordes as they're more niche strats and require some more advanced Atlas tree knowledge to take full advantage of. But that's something to consider if you're looking to boost the efficiency of league mechanics, especially ones that benefit from pack size like Expedition. So the first strategy we're going to talk about is Expedition. Expedition is one of the most consistent early game strats, and with the Atlas changes over the last couple of leagues, it continues to be one of, if not the best, for raw currency very, very early. So Expedition itself is a league mechanic that shows up in maps that allows us to excavate areas of monsters, and those monsters will drop special currencies and logbooks relating to the Expedition League. The currencies will allow us to buy things from the Expedition vendors, including currency itself, items, and also logbooks. Logbooks are special maps that will transport you to an area where the entire area is excavatable. It, that'll, they'll also give you substantially more Expedition-related currency compared to the Expeditions you find in your basic maps. Logbooks can also include some rare boss encounters that'll drop a large stack of refresh currencies and unique items if you can manage to defeat it. In addition to the special currency, the monsters inside of any expedition related content can also drop reroll currency, which allows you to reroll and refresh the contents of any of the expedition vendors. For an early game strategy, we're going to want to focus mainly on encountering Tujin. Tujin is the vendor that sells basic PO currency and maps, which is going to have a huge impact on your bank and your progression, especially when you're at low amounts of currency in the early game. If you wanted to invest even further into Expedition, I highly recommend using your Atlas points on increasing the chance to encounter Danig, which is located right here. Danig is the vendor that sells currency for other vendors, as well as refresh currency. He can also sometimes offer logbooks, which will hugely help boost your Expedition income. In the description, you'll find two separate trees. The first tree includes nodes to increase the chance to counter Expedition. The, this version is mainly for those of you who won't be using Scarabs to guarantee that you see Expedition in a map. The second tree is going to include a special version for those of you who do have Expedition Scarabs. Both trees have an excess of extra points, so you can put it into any other league mechanic you wish to play through alongside Expedition. Second on the list, we have the Blight League. Blight's a league mechanic that will spawn a Blight Pump alongside the NPC Cassia inside of your maps. When you interact with the pump, it'll generate multiple paths with portals at the very end of them. These portals will spawn monsters into the map that follow the path towards the pump, trying to destroy the pump. Along the path, you'll also find icons which allow you to build towers and help defend those paths from monsters. Once all the monsters are defeated, the portals at the end of the pass will be replaced by loot boxes that will drop all kinds of various items and basic currencies. These boxes also sometimes drop an item called oils, which we can use to anoint passive tree nodes on amulets and other specific unique items related to the Blight League. You can also anoint your rings with passives that'll grant bonuses to your Blight Towers. 
Like Expedition, Blight Encounters can also drop maps that'll transport you to an area with a Blight Encounter much more involved than the ones that you can find in maps. The main income from an early Blight focus strategy is oils. Early on in the league, many people will need to anoint their items and farming oils can give you a nice boost to your early game income. This is the point in the league where oil supply is at its lowest and the amount of people needing oils for anoints is at its highest. So it pays to take advantage of that. In the description, I'll include two separate trees, one for an atlas tree focused around encountering blight without scarabs, and the second tree, as I mentioned before with Expedition, will be specifically tailored to those who are going to be using blight scarabs. The third strategy we're going to go over is one that may perform a little worse this league than previous leagues, and that strategy is Legion. Legion held more value early league before the nerfs introduced in 3.22 because a desire for running 5 ways for XP boosting was really, really high. With nerfs to the efficiency, it's hard to say exactly how profitable selling Legion-related emblems and stuff are, but Legion as a mechanic itself adds a lot of monsters and rewards to the map, so I still think it's going to be a pretty efficient strategy for early game. So basically with Legion, all we do is we pop a Legion monolith in the map. You'll come across a purple monolith. You click it, it'll spawn monsters. You kill those monsters. Those monsters will be released from stasis. And at the end of the countdown, all of those monsters will respawn again as actual monsters that you need to kill. Keep in mind, Legion can be a little bit difficult for slower clearing builds to do. So if you're playing a more single target focused build or you're struggling with killing things before the Legion even pops, you might want to consider making some adjustments or avoiding the strategy altogether. Since Legion can be a little bit difficult, I'm going to include three trees for this one. First tree will be a standard Legion tree if you're not using Scarabs. Second will be a tree if you are using Scarabs. And the third will be a tree if you may be struggling with Legion as a whole. The last Atlas strat we're going to talk about is the Boss Rush strat. This is a strat that I've run an extensive amount of times over the last handful of leagues and one I'm likely going to swap over to in the first or second week of the league. This strat revolves around playing a fast build that can make it to a map boss and clear that map boss in a reasonable amount of time. The lower the better. One caveat of this strat is that you basically ignore every other league mechanic in the game. So most of our points are going to go into dropping maps as well as buffing boss related drops in the map. I have a few videos from previous leagues going more in depth into the boss rush strat, so I highly recommend checking some of them out to get a better idea on how it all works, but I'll go over the core fundamentals right now. The first thing we do is decide on what maps to run. The most successful method I've seen is to run two small quick to run maps that are connected to one another on the Atlas screen. Some of the efficient maps to run are Park, Shore, Arid Lake, Atoll, Waste Pool, Canyon, City Square, coves, and fields. The strategy here is to allocate as many nodes that grant chance to drop connected map as possible, while blocking the chance to drop any maps aside from the one that you actually want to drop. To do this, we take the shadow shaping node on the atlas tree, which means any maps we have favorited will never drop. After allocating that node, we hop into the atlas screen, favorite all of the connected maps other than the one that we want to drop, and then we run our map pool. So anytime we get a connected map drop, it's only going to be the one that we actually want. Once our map pool is completely depleted, we mirror the exact same strategy on our second map, which will only drop our first map as a connected map. The other method with this build is to forego sustaining maps and not take shadow shaping. We can favorite the map we want to drop, but with this method, we'll likely have to buy maps from another player at some point. With either of these methods, we can also favor a high value map such as Crimson Temple. And instead of running it as our second map, we simply just sell the map and buy more of the first map. You'll have to determine if this is worth doing based on the prices of the maps you choose to run. A basic boss rush build is included in the comments, but I'll most likely have a video next week outlining the full strategy I choose and its performance. All right, so these are the mechanics that most of my core early game strategies revolve around. As supplementary mechanics, you can also pick up things like Strongbox, Harbinger, Shrines, Essences, Eater and Exarch Influences, and the Seance node from Torment. These are tried and true mechanics that will either add more monsters or another income stream to the other strategies we just went over. I highly recommend experimenting with some of the other builds as well. That'll pretty much wrap up this video. I hope you found it helpful. Thank you for watching until the end, and I appreciate all of you.